All right, here we go. So um, the elective class you guys will have to take is called Intro to Business. And again, there's only two times when a person would have to take this class. One is if you need credits. So um, the way the school works is you take your required or mandatory classes first, math, English, science, social studies, religion, things of that sort. When you're done with your first semester, if you need more credits, you have to come back and do a couple of other classes, depending on how many credits you need. You might only need one more class. You could need another five or whatever. Um, and so those are your electives or kind of the classes that you get a choice, um, whether you're gonna take music or business or job preparation or whatever the case may be. Um, for us, as with most schools, um, we require business to be one of your electives because even if you don't plan on opening a business, there's still so much you can learn from the business class. You practice your speaking skills, your writing skills, your planning skills, sales and marketing, and it's good for interviewing skills. So even if you already have a job, it's gonna give you more practice on convincing people to see your perspective or getting them to be persuaded to see your point of view. Um, all those good things, especially since getting this diploma is supposed to kind of motivate you and prepare you to go to the next level. Um, and it doesn't matter where you are, because I've had people come here that were already supervisors or had decent careers, and they still really felt like, if I get this diploma, I want to do more or be more. And then last but not least, if you plan on going to college, you're going to stay in front of the class giving speeches and speaking <laughs> And because they're trying to prepare you for the workforce <coughs> and to get good, good jobs and not just a job. So part of that is going to be interacting with customers or people or even giving big presentations or whatever. So because we love you so much <laughs> as a good high school, our job is to prepare you for all of that, whether you want to enhance your career or just be prepared for college. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had people come here from other high schools and say, oh, man, we never had to give a speech at our other school. High school, we giving speeches, that's for college people. Well, a good high school actually is supposed to prepare you for college and for the workforce. And if they're not, they're doing something wrong. So we're going to fix all that today. So grab this sheet <laughs> and let's discuss this class because you know if... You need um, anything more than just your OGT, you're going to have to do this. So let's go over what you're going to have to do. Mm -hmm. um, the top part is just basic information. It's going to have your name and the date. And then if you notice the third line down, it says this form is completed by. So there's your name goes here, the date goes here. Form completed by. This is what I need to explain a little bit. When you give your presentation, you're pretending that you're presenting to a bank. You get a choice. You can come in and pretend that you're opening a company or you're starting some type of program. So you get a choice there. You can say, I'm starting the whatever, neighborhood gardening club. And then your job is to convince the bank to give you the money for that because you're going to explain why they should. Or you can say, I plan on opening, I don't know, the biggest gospel music um, recording studio in the world. So it can be a business or it can be a community program. But whatever it is, <coughs> we're working through this assignment to enhance your planning skills, your creativity, your strategic thinking, all that good stuff, and especially your budgeting. Because even if you never have a job and you a housewife, house husband, or whatever, you need to know how to do a budget if we're going to trust you in this society with some money. So your form is going to be completed by each one of your classmates. You come in. It's normally going to be five to ten people. It's been 15 a few times, but it's normally five to ten people. And they're going to pretend they're the bank. You're presenting to them. 
And based on this sheet, they're going to decide whether you pass or fail. Mm -hmm. So let's look at this sheet. The first thing says, is the plan or the purpose clear? That's very important. It sounds like common sense or it sounds pretty simple, but it's not. Because we've had people come up here and say, I want to open a hair store slash senior citizen home slash daycare. <laughs> No, I'm serious. I know you laughing, Rashita, but I'm serious. And so by the time they left and I said, okay, class, it's time to grade them because when it's you present and then we have you leave the room for about 20 minutes and we grade you. Well, they grade you and then I tell you what they decided. Come on in. Um, and so, yeah, we've had people say, well, I don't even know what to grade because is she opening a hair shop, the senior citizen center, the daycare, it's so much going on, what am I grading? Um, so you wanna kinda keep, even if you're opening a company with several parts, you wanna explain why that's necessary and how it's all gonna work together and not just jump back and forth so that the audience is confused. Makes sense? Okay, y'all sure? Cause you're awfully quiet. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the next thing says your marketing plan. All right, who could tell me what a marketing plan is? Cause y'all are too t t uh, quiet this morning. Marketing plan, what do we mean by that? What's your marketing plan? Anybody? Um. Okay, okay, that's why we, see, y'all need school. <laughs> Which means y'all got to spend more time with me. Okay, so your marketing plan means this is your way of letting people know your company or your program exists and getting your name out there. Because if nobody knows you exist, you can have the best cupcakes in the world, but who's going to buy them if nobody ever heard of you? So marketing, that's super, super important because people need to know you exist. All right, then the next one, it says, what's your location? Even if you don't know the exact building address or where your office is going to be, you should at least have some type of general idea. Oh, I want to be, yeah, I want to be in side. Euclid. Yeah, east side, west, something because as a bank they need to determine is it feasible is that really a good That's place a yeah for that type of company um for example if i'm starting something called super hoochie nails or whatever i might not want to open that in a business full of older distinguished caucasian men um in a cigar place where they go smoke after work you know, they're not interested in my super hoochie nails. Um, so all of that is important. All right, and then this is the big one. We've had people that had almost perfect presentations, but if you don't do this when you fail. Um, so put a star, put something in your notes, but if you don't do this one right here, you fail. And that is, did they ask for funds? We've had people explain the company they want to open, how they want to open it, where it's going to be, how they're going to get people to come buy the product. And then again, what are you pretending you're doing? You're coming to what? Uh, yeah, where are you coming to? I said you're presenting to a pretend what? Bank, right? Money. Yeah. So when you go to the bank, you're asking them for what? Money. 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 Right. So... Yeah, I've had people come in here and say, I'm opening whatever, my own car lot. And such and such is going to give me the cars they don't sell and I get to keep the inventory. I mean, just have it all planned out. They explain what their company going to do when they say, okay, thank you. We still don't know what they need. Mm -hmm. That's the whole purpose of coming to the bank. How much do you need? All right, so that's really important. Did they ask for funds? Which leads to the next one. Did they have a budget and is it reasonable? So for your budget, that's where that's not the same as asking for funds. You can't say, I told y'all I needed $100,000, I thought I was done. No, you need to tell us how you plan to spend the $100,000. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure you guys have heard something in the media where somebody was blessed with a million dollars from a grant or whatever 
government or a scholarship or whatever and instead of doing what they were supposed to do with it what they do the next week they was flossing in somebody's mm -hmm. bentley right <laughs> and so then you see such and such has been arrested no when you go or come here rather to your bank and ask for that hundred thousand or that hundred million we need to see exactly how you plan on spending every dime and where it's going how much are you spending on electricity and water and insurance and rent or whatever your particular business is going to need? And then I know sometimes having a visual aid really helps. So I've actually posted some presentations from graduates of here, mm -hmm. this school, online so that you can watch those and kind of see. Get an idea. Yeah, get an idea. <coughs> um, not that yours should be just like that one because it's not perfect. Um, but we have a what to do and what not to do video posted just to give you some kind of pointers. Okay, the next one, it says, was the presentation organized? That's super important. So I'm going to tell you, some people have flunked, even though they did everything on this sheet because it was just so poorly organized. It was just sad. And we knew if you put them in front of any audience, they would never convince anybody of anything. So let me give an example. I've had people come up there and say, I'm going to open a restaurant and we're going to sell, um, um, We gonna sell spaghetti and garlic bread, and for the drinks we gonna have um, lemonade and fruit punch. And they will have all the information and all the answers to everything on our checklist, but guess what? We couldn't wait till they were done. Yeah, it was not organized. And you know, it was like, you gonna come back and do that again seriously so ahead of time practice this figure out what your weaknesses are where you kind of stammer which parts you need to practice a little bit you want to do that ahead of time okay next do we know the target audience anybody know what a target audience is okay a target audience means the particular people you're going after. Remember I mentioned earlier, what if I'm opening super hoochie nails? Right. Then I probably want to market to somebody that's not going to be offended, first of all, by the name super hoochie. So, <laughs> um, second though, I want to go after somebody who really wants to keep their nails done. So if I'm in a certain environment where everybody's really into health or anti-chemical so they kind of keep their nails really short or they're working out with weights all day those might not be the women i want to go after necessarily so i need to say okay is this i need to be walking around observing and doing market surveys or whatever but i need to make sure i'm in a neighborhood where my business is going to stay open because in that particular area women love their nails um all right, so your target audience, when you explain it, you're going to say something like, my target audience is teens, or my target audience is women or men, and you want to be even more specific. It's white men, it's black men, it's Chinese men, whatever it is. We need to know who you're going after, and then we need to decide if we agree with who you're going after. But more important, that's actually for you because it helps you stay focused instead of being all over the place. Because if your product is, um, what, something like how to lift your butt or whatever, um, I'm just making up something and it's a women's butt lifting product then I might not want to be marketed it to teens or something because they already got nice cushy lifted butts right. if it's for older middle-aged women yeah. um so I'm kind of trying or on the older men's sports station I don't think the men 
tuning in to the ba basketball game. Like, and then they listen, they all hyped about LeBron, and then you come on. Would you like to have a nicer, rounder, <laughs> right. juicier butt? He like, maybe my wife, but not really. I mean, so, but if the wife hear that, she like, hey, hmm. So, I mean, you want to kind of market it to the most receptive people. So your target audience is key. Just like everybody sitting here right now is an African-American female. Mm -hmm. We have other populations, but only 2% of the women that come here are not African-American. And we know that, so we capitalize on that. We market in other places. Sometimes we've had Caucasian women, we've had Hispanic women, um, and mostly they heard about us from African American women. Mm -hmm. So they came, but we knew, um, based on statistics, African American women right now have the highest rates of high school and college graduation. Um, because of that, there are certain ways that we market and certain places that we market. And so you as an entrepreneur or somebody who's starting any type of program mm -hmm. needs to know who's more likely to come after what I'm offering. Makes sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good. All right, y'all, we almost through. A couple more, bear with me. All right, do we know the schedule? That's important. What if I'm the bank? And I want to do a drop by or drive by, whatever we want to call it. Banks do that because they want to see where their money going. Or what if I'm just a customer? So inconsistency can be a big hindrance to your company. People think, oh, girl, and I hear people all the time, Dr. Ison, can you help me get a grant? Because I just want to control my own schedule. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I can work when I want to. I'm going to be taking me some vacays, girl, Dr. Ison. And in my head, I'm like, you ain't ready. <laughs> Entrepreneurs, until they really get established, we take less off days, vacations. I'm probably grading papers in my sleep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes I'll even have friends or family members and they'll call me the day before something happening. Girl, be there tomorrow at noon. Right. Yeah, and it really hurt me one time because it was something like a life-changing event. And one of my family members told me maybe a week, maybe a week ahead of time about this event. So I didn't have time to hire a substitute or anything just because of where we were in the school at the time. Um, but it was the first day of school coming up. It was on a Saturday. I think it was the last Saturday class, matter of fact, before this one. Mm -hmm. And my family member was just like, oh, next week I'm, and it was this big thing, like getting married or something. And I'm like, that's the first day of school. Oh, but you the president, you the, no, I'm not the president, but you're the principal. And you got other te yes, I have other teachers, but the first day of school, I'm always the teacher. Like, <laughs> so yeah, this, so if any of you is like, oh, I'm glad Dr. Rice, I'm having us do this assignment because I'm going to open my own business for real. I'm about to be kicking it. No. Um. And I say that to say, where it says, do we know your schedule? You need to have hours posted on your wall or wherever on your flyers. And you need to really be available during those hours most of the time so that people see some consistency. Um, I'll never forget, I was doing a mentorship class with Juanita Bynum. Some of y'all might know her, the famous preacher. And... Um, she said one of the reasons uh, Mrs. Field, the cookie place, um, is so successful because every time you got, go buy original cookies, the paper's always red and white and everybody know. You could be down the street around the corner and see that big red and white sign. you like, oh, girl, I'm hungry. Let's go get some Miss Field. You see that, that red and white? That's Miss Field's cookies. You smell them? But she said, what if sometimes you went and Miss Field was like, oh, I think today I'm going to change the paper to blue. Next week is going to be yellow. Oh, I just feel like I'm going to just close today. I don't even feel like cooking cookies. Who would come if we never knew when you was going to be open to get the cookies and when you wasn't? And 
you got an order for a thousand cookies waiting for somebody's bridal shower and you decide that day you don't feel like getting out of bed because you was at the club too late last night. All right, so schedules, crucial. Um, I give you guys the schedule when you come to orientation. These are definitely the class times. If it's on there, I'm going to be here. Or one of my teachers is going to be here. Yeah, we don't send you a text. We ain't feel like coming tomorrow. Stay home. <laughs> Even if it's a professional day and we're closing, we're going to give you plenty of notice, which is rare for us anyway. Okay, moving on. Was the presentation filled with passion? So what if I come up here and say, or one of the students comes up here and says, I want to open a company because... I want to groom dogs because dogs cute and I want to wash them and help <laughs> dogs stay cute because cute dogs is cute. Don't y'all think so? <laughs> is that filled with passion? No, not at all. Did that make you want to hear more? No. no at all. <laughs> it made you want to go home and cry. <laughs> all right, so it's important if I come in here, you need to be so passionate that the person who don't even like dogs want to go get a dog. I mean, you want to come out with samples. Here's a copy of my Louis Vuitton dog neck bow tie that I give them after they get the bath and then they have doggy ponytails and they smell all good. Then you want to pull out the scents and people like, ooh, that Louis thing cute. I might get a dog just to match my Louis purse <laughs> so we could be flossing together. I mean, you really, or somebody like, ooh, girl, that remind me of that Bath and Body Works. Ooh, can I have some of this doggy shampoo? <laughs> I mean, but you want to have something that kind of gets the audience into it. So they just want to hear more and see more. So you leave and they like, leave that lotion. Right. Right, seriously. Yeah, I've never left a presentation, well, I'm sure maybe once, but most of the time when I'm presenting about this school, people, normally it's a room full of judges about the size of this room, and at least one or two of them out of the group is sometimes four of them. Here, can I come speak? I love young kids. I'm going to give you my card on the slide. And so all of them trying to do this on the slide is like blatantly obvious. All of y'all didn't have to go to the bathroom at one time. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're doing it right, somebody should want to do more or be more. I've had people say, I know um, we're supposed to be just deciding if we like you to see if you get the grant, but I got a garage full of books I was about to take to the Goodwill. So call me, I'm going to give them to your school. Just call mm -hmm. me. So, yeah, that's what, when you leave out of here, the class should kind of be thinking about what you said or did the same way. Yeah, I've had people, I wasn't always happy about it. I had one person, um, she's a physical trainer, and she brought before and after copies of pictures of her clients, and she brought one client in with her. By the time she left, I had to take back control of my class because everybody was trying to sign up to lose weight. <laughs> Um, then a couple of weeks ago, I had a girl do her presentation, and she does nails. So it took about 20 minutes to get everybody off their phone because they on Instagram following her page so they could set up nail appointments. And her presentation, it wasn't the most one. It was decent. It was a decent. She stumbled and made a lot of mistakes. But when she pulled out them pictures, all was forgiven. They gave her, like, off the chart. I'm like, it was good, but come on. But Dr. Eisen, did you see them nails? That's all they can hear. I'm like, what's her schedule? Um, did you see them nails? <laughs> all right, so lastly, which that ties into what I just said, it says rate the visual aids if any were used. By visual aids, I mean pictures or websites or poster boards or whatever they had. So for her, she had pictures from her Instagram. So visual aids are not mandatory. We're not going to flunk you. But I will say, you better be good if you plan on coming up here without visual aids. Because the visual aids help the audience see and understand what you're saying. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So if you say, I want to do nails, or I do nails, and I put designs on them, 
And several of you in here, each one of you is picturing something different based on what designs you've seen in the past. But if I start pulling out pictures of the designs, you like, mm, I ain't never seen that one before. Mm -mm, I got an outfit that matched that one. And you can see what they see. So that's really important. Um, and then the last thing it says is final decision. So you'll have three options after you present. The audience will decide, yes, that was phenomenal. You passed. You're totally done with this assignment. Or they'll decide, no, you just need to start from scratch. We couldn't even figure out where that was going or what you were doing, and we just, you get an F. Which happened in the case of the individual I told y'all came in here and wanted to open a daycare slash senior center slash hair store slash restaurant. Um, <laughs> stop laughing. Seriously. Um, and I think... You're really excited, huh? You know, I want to spend some time on that now that we're discussing it. At first, she presented it, the class flunked her. And it's up to you guys, in most cases, when you present again. So she presented to that particular class, and she said, they just didn't like me. So she waited another semester until a new group of students started. Mm -hmm. What happened when the new group of students started again? She failed again. Because a whole group of strangers who never met the other group still could not follow. And I sat her down because she said the same thing. Oh, they was just some hate. No. 30 people, two different groups of 15 people just said, what was that? You need to sit down and focus. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you guys this. Don't get defensive and say automatically they didn't know what they was talking about. I know my presentation good. Can't nobody tell me this ain't good. I'm going to do what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to wait to the next group because then I know I'm going to pass. If they said, we didn't like your schedule, sit down and really think about why an entire group of people said they didn't like your schedule. Um, it's not always the group. Sometimes it is you. Um, and you can come discuss it with me and we'll decide together. But yeah, at least listen and consider that possibly the class or the bankers in this case may actually have some valid points. Dr. Ice, I have yes. a question. Mm -hmm. Okay, what if you could be at home, right? Mm -hmm. And you could do this presentation so good, but when you come mm -hmm. around, people get stage fright. You know, you know, mm -hmm. and it's That's like that. Mm -hmm. Me too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could be at home. And you could sit up here and you could be in the mirror and you could just You could be fine at home but once but you get here you be stuck. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that happens all the time. Oh my god. So, oh my god. <laughs> so suggestions for that um is practice in front of several different groups of people. Um and also if you can videotape yourself, even if it's on your phone. Don't, I want to, let me say two things. One, practice, as I said, in front of different groups of people See, because they're going to give you different feedback. And so that'll help you make improvements. So, two, you're going to be nervous even if you practice. So get that out your head. Don't ever think, I'm going to practice this so much, I'm not going to be nervous. Or I must not be good at this because I'm nervous. We've been running this school six years. Before we opened the school, the six years before that, we had a community center, which is what led us to open the school. So I've been giving presentations for 12 years to raise money, to get board members, community support, donations like school supplies and books and all that good stuff. Sometimes I'm more nervous than others. Sometimes I just go in, I'm like, yeah, let's do this. But the nervousness still after 12 years is not completely, completely gone. There are some days where I know we have a great program, we changing lives, but I'm still like, okay, Lord, if you just let me get through this, um, I'm going to give an extra offering. I mean, you be promising all kinds of stuff just to get rid of them kind of butterflies. So, yeah, don't expect to come in here and just not be nervous at all. That's not going to happen. Um, but practicing will help.
first and then second watch a video of yourself if you can that helps as well and then third um kind of have some notes it shouldn't be here's what messes some students up they'll type everything out word for word and then you trying to find your place on this long document so it helps if you use note cards or even if you don't use note cards if you use one sheet of paper don't write a speech put like bullets and one big word that you can see quickly when you look down so you might have a big bullet that says history of company another big bullet that says reason for starting company another big bullet that says how I plan to raise money. But you should already know those things because this is your company. So you should be able to just look at that and say, oh, I need to explain that and then explain it. But you shouldn't have to read it word for word. I plan to raise company money by passing out flyers. No, when you see ways I'm raising money, you should just jump right into it so that you're not reading because they're gonna grade you even though it's not listed on here, they need to add it. They're gonna grade you on eye contact too. Did we feel like you read the whole time because we could have just read it ourselves? If we weren't gonna get a good presentation, we didn't need you here for that. You could have just sent us something by email. So you could pick any topic? Mm -hmm. As long as it's a pretend company you're gonna open, or a community program or something you're going to start yes um oh back to the decisions though again you get a yes you're done it was great a no start all over or the third one is yes but changes are required so for that last decision they might say as you're going to see on the sample videos we have online We've had some students, as I mentioned before, did great presentations, didn't ask for the money, or they did great presentations, but they came in here, um, shirt off, V-cut, shoulders, everything, which we don't allow. Um, but you need to pretend you're actually coming to a genuine bank. And if I'm coming to a bank, I don't want to be offensive to anybody in some tube top with my stuff all, yeah, dress, be respectful. So, yeah, questions? Yeah. All right, so the assignment makes sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to say this. We used to have a 10-minute, well, we started with a 20-minute minimum, but 20 minutes by the time that was over, we were just like, in most cases, please stop. So we lowered it to 10. What I'm going to do this semester, there is not a minimum, but I suggest you do at least five minutes because it's going to be hard to touch on all of these and really give a lot of good details if your presentation is less than five minutes. I mean, you're talking about explaining your target audience, why you opened the company, how you're going to run the company, where it's going to be, what your hours are going to be, and all of that good stuff in less than five minutes is probably not possible not to do a thorough job okay so before i start something else any questions anything okay okay that's fine all right moving on